Hi guys and a warm welcome back to the watercolour channel. Now today I'm just going to be having some fun with my watercolour so let's roll that intro and let's dive straight in. Hi guys and a very warm welcome back to the watercolour channel and as I said just now I am going to have a bit of fun tonight with my watercolour and there is a very very good reason for that because all week I have been very busy taking my gallery apart in Hyde quite literally everything came off the walls colours been repaired on different aspects of the wall the front window has been changed I've taken my uh, teaching out the back and making the front a pure gallery and it's all in readiness for a lovely sale of paintings that is coming up at the end of the month more on that later but it's meant that I haven't had the time to sit down and plan a video for you guys and and paint that and produce it so I didn't want to let the week go by without doing anything so I felt tonight why not just take the time out have a little bit of fun, see what happens in the form of an abstract using all the different things that I have at my disposal. And I'm sure you have many of these items too. And just to literally, yeah, I can't let my hair down. So there's not a lot of it. But the point is, is just let your hair down and have fun and just see where a bit of experimentation takes you. And so without further ado, let's get straight on and see what happens. Okay, Rudy, before we get headlong throwing loads of paint on this beautiful piece of paper I've prepared, let's just take a quick look at some of the things that I've got at my disposal when it comes to painting watercolours, whether it's an abstract or an ink and wash or whatever it might be. The idea of having these items is to be able to create different marks when you are creating a piece of work. Now I've got ink that is a dip ink i've got waterproof and water soluble i've got umpteen different pens with different nibs in them fine medium food all different ones and they have different inks in those too pencils sticks to deliver the dip pen i've got matchsticks to do the same job i have pens here that i can dip in bleach and things like that and have a lot of fun with that's actually my writing pen i don't know quite why that's in there but i have all my um travel brushes are in here too and i have white gel pens i have a whole raft of stuff now you do not need to have all of this when it comes to creating uh, an abstract or an ink or wash or anything at all but i'm sure each and every one of you will have one or two items, whether it's a brush pen or whether it's a, uh, a standard waterproof pen, say from Unipin, something like that, which is easily and cheap to obtain. But if you have other stuff, then start putting them in a box where if you want something, it's all there. I have a vast array here and knowing me, I will just keep adding to it. But I've got them there tonight if I want to use any of them at all. Of course, I've got my lovely palette here. That's fantastic. And it's got a couple of fresh squeeze colors out here. The That will become quite obvious as we move forward. As for brushes, well, I've got loads of them at disposal if I want to, but I'm just gonna probably play around with these ones. They're all Rosemary and Company. They're all red dot. And don't forget, if you go onto her website and you do choose any brush, whether it's acrylic, oil or watercolor travel or otherwise then if we on checkout if you put in my name paul apps uh, in capitals that will if you put that into the affiliate link then i get a little thank you from rosemary for promoting them but like i always say i've used nothing but i do still use nothing but i love them that's not quite true i do have another couple of brushes from another company in there which you've seen me use from time to time but they were gifts Generally, I stick to rosemary brushes. All right, let's get on there. Let's see what a mess we can actually make and dive straight into it. Okay, one last thing. What I didn't actually mention was something like this. This is so simple. Store cards, old credit cards, chop them up, make different shapes out of them. These are just a couple I've got here. And these are going to be very, very useful in today's piece of work. 
Now, as I said, I'm just going to have fun. And that's all I really want to do is just have fun. But just take you guys along for the journey and just open up your eyes a little bit to some of the prospects that you can do on odd bits of paper moving forward. This is an old piece of paper. It's an old piece of, uh, I think it's ash. It's 300 pounds in weight. It's a not surface, not quite the rough as some of my papers, but it is an older piece. Now, I do hope... Before I start, I did test an off cut to make sure the sizing was still good. I think it is. I hope it is. But the idea of this one is to actually, I've made the size just over 12 inches. It's actually 31 centimeters across. Now that what will happen with that is I've got a little bit of a gap each side and I can use a 12 inch mat on this. And that will expand out to a 16 inch square frame. So I've got a lovely white frame, 16 inches square. I've got a lovely mat that this will sit into. Ideally, I could have probably gone over a little bit bigger just to make sure that I don't encroach over it. I think we'd be fine. But the reason that I'm doing this tonight is the fact that recently I've been doing an awful lot of abstracts as small original for cards and other items. And I wanted to share that with you, which I will do in time. But I just wanted to share the process of making a bigger version. And that's what we're doing tonight. So we're just going to have a bit of fun. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is just take a bit of sponge, wet it up, and just wet some of this paper. Just have a little bit of water coming through here. I'm going to dip in a little bit of this uh, Payne's grey through here and let that come all the way through Now I have no idea how this is going to turn out got to be said I really do not know what's going to happen with this But I just want to have a lot of fun with it. Now I'm going to use a spray bottle I'm just going to gently spray and see how that affects and creates a lovely sort of trees something like that into the distance i'm going to let that run it's going to run that way i'm going to let it run that way first and let it do what it wants to do then i'm going to let it run back down lots of colors at my disposal of course and i don't want to make it a complete rainbow so it's going to drag out a little bit of red into there but i do like the idea of just creating marks and seeing where the whole story is going to end up i'm going to level that down now I'm going to drag this through on its side like that. So in a sense, we're not painting clouds, we're not painting sky. What we're simply doing is creating a color band that could suggest that that is blue sky. You can reinforce that more traditionally by adding a little bit of a wash going in there. water you don't have to let it run all over you which I just did <laughs> you can take the excess off like that it doesn't really matter but I think we've got a lovely uh, suffusion of color down through here do I want to add in other colors I'm not sure one color I really do like adding in at some point is a magenta or a carmine something that is like a mauvey warm red some salt to it now this is 
You don't want to add salt when it's too wet because all it does is dissolve the salt. And it can also make it become, it almost acts like a glue. I'm just gonna add some salt into some of this here. The nice thing about painting like this in any regard is the fact that everything you do becomes completely unique because you, you can't repeat any of this. You can't come up and do a Mark II. Well, you can do, but it won't look the same as what I'm trying to say. You can't recreate the same picture. So every painting you do in this fashion and enjoying yourself while you do it is, is all about the enjoyment I think but you'll never repeat it don't even try just have fun doing the one and if you like it great move on do another one Now, what I will do is I'm going to use a stiffer brush and I carry this little old cheap brush with nylon hairs in it for this purpose. Let me just hold it up there. That's all I use this one for. And I'm going to uh, reactivate some gouache that I used on another painting. Alright, so what am I going to do now? Well, I'm just going to put a little toe in reality. This is my little bit, and I just like, if I can, that will let me just put a few birds in. I love putting birds into any paintings anyway. I don't want to go too mad with it, but I just want a few definite birds that are flying through the scene. Okay, everybody, I hope you enjoyed that. I had a heap of fun painting it and I'm sure you got something from it. Now, the message behind this is to see all of those things that you've got at your disposal at home, pens, bits of stick, ink and different other different things that you may already own. Stick them together because they're all ways of making marks on your painting and you will no doubt be glad that you put them together and you can use them you may not use them all each and every time but they're there if you want to so what i'm saying is have a go take odd bits of paper this was an old piece of paper and at the end of the day it didn't really matter if something came from it or didn't come from it i had a heap of fun playing around with the paint and experimenting and that's what i'm suggesting to you guys so look at what you've got take your colors take your bits and pieces have a bit of paper spare 
get messy, have a splosh around and see what comes from it. And I'm sure there'll be some of you thinking, yeah, that was a real sweet idea and have a lot of fun along the way too. And if you are, uh, what I will say, there is no reference this week for this one on the Patreon. Um, it's out of my head. So you can use your own reference or you can just scribble around and think landscapes or whatever you want to do and create something but while you're over on the patreon why not check it out there is well over 170 nearly 180 videos there for you to get your teeth into enjoy fully narrated full length so check it out and i'd love to welcome you as my latest patron moving forward now if you've enjoyed this as always i'm going to say to you please subscribe to the channel and also add your comments if you've got any thoughts about this or anything else then add them in the comments section underneath i'll always answer them always read them i enjoy doing that with that all said and done i am going to get stuck in to having another go at one of these because they are so much fun to play around with so i'll see each of you in the next video next friday three o'clock take care everybody stay safe enjoy have fun bye bye